Thank you, Judith. Thank you all for being here. My name is Mary Lou Bongiorno. This is my husband, Jerome Bongiorno. We are filmmakers, and we live and work in this city of Newark, New Jersey. As you can see, Newark is a great city, but it has huge problems. Because we live here, and because we're social justice filmmakers, we create films like Revolution 67 and The Rule, and we host conferences like the Newark Poverty Reduction Conference at Rutgers to explore solutions to the problems that we face in our city. And our really big idea to revitalize Newark and other cities like Newark is very simple, reduce poverty. To understand Newark's poverty, let's compare Newark to a town like Nutley, New Jersey. Nutley, New Jersey is another town in Essex County, and Nutley is about four miles away from Newark, and it has a very low poverty rate of about 5%. While Newark has a very high poverty rate, in 2007, Newark's poverty was 25%, and today Newark's poverty is 32%. That means one in three people live below the poverty line. In a town like Newark of 280,000 people with a poverty rate of 32%, that means nearly 90,000 people live below the poverty line. And for somebody who's living below the poverty line, that means that they're living on less than $12,000 a year. You try to live on less than $12,000 a year. And if that's not bad enough, we know that many people get caught in what's known as a cycle of poverty. That's when poor families get trapped in poverty for at least three generations. So we showed in Revolution 67 and at the Poverty Reduction Conference that history has proven that there is a direct link between poverty and crime. So is it surprising that when poverty rose in Newark, our murder rate also jumped from eighth to third highest in the nation? But we also know that in addition to poverty being linked to crime, it's also been linked to poor school performance. So yes, it's very clear to us that poverty is the root of all Newark's problems, the crime, the bad education. This is all the result of an environment that's smothered by poverty. So what about that revitalization in Newark? How do we revitalize Newark? Or the question is, how do we reduce Newark's poverty? Well, when we go on screenings for our films like Revolution 67, The Rule, people always come after us and ask us, you know, I heard that there's a lot of building in the downtown area. That must mean that Newark is revitalizing. And we tell them, no, that doesn't mean that Newark is revitalizing. Through research for our films like Revolution 67 and the Newark Poverty Reduction Conference, history has shown us that building buildings in the downtown area, casinos, arenas, these do not help revitalize poor cities like Newark. The only way we're going to help revitalize Newark is we have to elevate the people out of poverty. And there are two ways to do this. The first one is we have to improve the educational system. Right now we have a very low graduation rate in Newark because schools aren't giving the kids what they need. And when these kids don't get what they need, this is the reason why not many of our kids make it to college. In our city of Newark, only 13% of Newark residents have a bachelor's degree. So when we look back at this picture of the Newark downtown building, how are our kids going to get jobs over there if they don't have degrees? So we have to improve the educational system, but how are we going to do that? Well, that was the subject of our film called The Rule. Because we live here, Newark's problems are our problems. And because we're filmmakers, we use film as a medium, as our voice, to offer solutions. So the rule offers the solution to improving urban education. Do you want inner city schools to finally succeed? Let's take a look at the beginning of the rule. I'm Mary Lou Bongiorno. My husband Jerome and I are filmmakers who have made Newark, New Jersey our home for many years. Newark is a great city, but it has huge problems. Nearly a third of our population lives in poverty, the crime rate is high, and the graduation rate is low. While searching for solutions, we were introduced to a place in the heart of the city called Newark Abbey. It's a 150-year-old monastery run by monks who wear black robes as they did in the sixth century. They operate a school 11 months of the year for 550 inner city young men. We found that even though many of these kids come from poor families, the school has a nearly 100% college acceptance rate. So we met with the monks, and one of the first things they told us was that long ago they realized that inner city kids need special elements not found in traditional schools, and that those elements are part of a 1,500-year-old monastic handbook called The Rule. 
So we wanted to find out what were those elements? How did these guys make them work for their kids? And could these elements be used to rehabilitate a whole city? So you just saw a clip from our The Rule documentary, which was released theatrically and on national PBS. It's about an all-boys high school called St. Benedict's Prep. Did you know that St. Benedict's Prep is right here on Martin Luther King Boulevard? It's literally a few steps down the road from where we're standing at NJIT. St. Benedict's Prep has had enormous success in educating inner city young men for over 40 years. As you heard in the clip, nearly 100% get accepted to college, and what's more, 85% finish college. Now that's a major inner city success story. So how do they do it? Well, Benedict's is successful because they give these kids, and we're talking about boys, what they need. Well, what is that? And do inner city kids need something different from kids in higher socioeconomic areas? Absolutely. Kids in inner cities are different. First of all, they're carrying around very heavy baggage that comes with living in a very poor environment. And if when they get to school, their school doesn't help them carry around that baggage, that's a problem. Let's take a look at what's inside that baggage. First of all, there's a myriad of things. There's the function from living in a broken home. Maybe there's no father there. Maybe there's no mother there. Maybe both of them are absent. Maybe one's in jail. Maybe one's drug addicted. And then maybe a parent is abusing the child, so there's a, a trust issue with them. And then there's the fear of the streets, and this is a big one. There's the fear of gangs and crime. Let's make believe you're a kid coming out of school. It's the end of the day. You're going to call your mom on the phone to come pick you up, whip out your cell phone, Someone sticks a gun in the back of your head asking you for your cell phone. Well, did that happen to you? That never happened to me, but it happens to these kids, and these kids live with this fear every day. So what would you expect from a kid who has to cope with this kind of fear? Uh, these kids can't be expected to focus on academics when they have such heavy-duty life-and-death issues to contend with. So these kids need a lot of help coping with these problems. But unfortunately, for many kids in our community, they don't get the help that they need from their families or their neighborhoods or even from their schools. So what happens? Well, we know what happens. They can't concentrate on academics, so they drop out of school. They become vulnerable to the street. And that cycle of poverty that we talked about continues, and crime persists. I came across these stats, which I think were staggering. Did you know that since 2001, one in six black men have been incarcerated? And if this trend continues as expected, then we should see that one of three black males born today should end up in prison at some time in their life. Did you know that 41% of Latinos over the age of 20 don't have a high school diploma? This is a national crisis. So what's Benedict's recipe for success? Well, the first thing you have to understand about Benedict's is it's more than just academics. There's a very extensive counseling program where the kids get counseled as part of their daily schedule. The counseling is so extensive that they have a dormitory or a residence on the campus. So the most vulnerable can live at the school for a day, a month, a year, or all four years if possible. And in addition to that, um, the students are constantly engaging in practices to learn how to trust one another. So for example, I love this one. There are no locks on their lockers. They learn leadership by literally running the school. So what you're seeing here is um, you have the senior leader surrounded by his group leaders, and they meet daily to talk about things like what changes to make to the schedule, or how to fix the attitude of the school, or get this, the best one, I feel, is they, they get together to talk about how to help a student who's giving his teacher problems. So this is all coming from the students. Remember we talked about before that Newark has the third highest murder rate in the United States? Well, Father Ed had something to say about this. He's the headmaster of the school, and he said, what we don't have in Newark is a sense of togetherness. That's why people can shoot each other. So what does Benedict's do? It creates programs like the freshman overnight where the freshmen come in and they live for an entire week at the school, fostering together in, togetherness and trust. At the end of freshman year, the freshmen go on a five-day hike on the, Appalachian, uh, on the Appalachian Trail. Again, togetherness, trust. We think the really big push for togetherness happens every morning. So if you visit St. Benedict's Prep at around 8 a.m., and we highly recommend that you do, 
all 550 students convene for convocation. It's one big homeroom. So it's this type of practice that fosters what the rule calls community. So here's St. Benedict's once again giving kids what they need, community. And so what would you expect from students who go to a school that instills values like trust and leadership and community, all wrapped in an excellent counseling program? I'll, I'll tell you what you would expect from these kids, that they would tune into education and that they would graduate. And that's not all you can expect from these kids. As Dr. Ivan Lamort, the head of the counseling department, told us, these kids get the value that they need. So now you can expect them to go on to college and you can expect them to finish college, and you can ex expect them to get out of college and get a job and keep that job and maybe buy a house and successfully pay off a mortgage, start a family, and stick it out with their kids. They will be there for their kids, all because these guys got the values that they needed. And when kids get the values that they needed, remember that cycle of poverty we talked about before? That's when the cycle of poverty ends for them. So let's take a look at the last clip from the rule. What we don't have in Newark is a sense of togetherness. That's why you people can shoot each other. It's real hard to do your math homework when someone's shooting at your window. Real difficult to be able to finish your history project when your mother is shooting heroin in the, in the living room. So now this child is not performing at the level you want him to. We're not talking about cognitive learning disabilities. You're talking about significant emotional issues that impact the kid's ability to be able to think. So we had to design a program to help the kid deal with those issues that when he went back into the classroom, he'd at least be able to get the education that was so important. That's a game changer. When a young man comes to St. Benedict's Prep, they learn stay tight, stay tight. the Benedictine values. Freshman, what's the motto? Because they need it. Do we want inner city schools to succeed? Absolutely. And now we have the model. Here it is, folks. It's the Benedict's model. So that no longer do uh, inner city schools have an excuse to fail. And we've had this model in Newark for the last 40 years. So earlier we said that there are two ways to elevate our community out of poverty. So we showed you one, which is to improve education. So what's the next solution? Well, that's the subject of our upcoming film called Rust. It's the third in our Three R's trilogy that began with Revolution 67, the rule, Rust. We're redefining right now the three R's, which are reading, writing, arithmetic, but for inner cities, we're saying it's Revolution 67, understanding and embracing the lessons of our past, the rule, improving urban education, and ultimately Rust, which is reduce poverty in inner cities. It's a no-brainer. But we're also asking all of you to, to stay very engaged in this community of change. So there is a free curriculum guide for each of these films that you can use in your schools, and you can use it in community groups, host screenings of the film, and prompt dialogue, because that's what we need. We need to build community, and we're asking you to stay tuned, and thank you for listening.